Electronic waste is the fastest growing waste problem in the world today. This year, at least 20 million computers worldwide will become obsolete. Each one of these machines will contain, on average, 25 kilos of plastics, metals, glass and other materials. In the United Kingdom, around half a million used televisions are either discarded or exported each year. To witness the ending of these objects and to see the fate of our celebrated high technology, we followed the trade in so-called e-waste to India and China, where much of the world's junk electronics are collected, sorted and reprocessed. Nehru Place looks like a housing estate. It is in fact a multi-story computer market, a warren of 2,000 shops occupying a crumbling concrete superstructure in south-central Delhi. As well as selling the latest products from well-known technology brands, Nehru Place is also a market for used computers. Brokers collect old monitor and computer parts, sending them to the industrial estates at the edges of the city. The air in Mandoli is thick and tastes metallic. Walled compounds hide furnaces where amid the dirt, smoke and heat, base metals are recovered from the city's waste. The work here is hard and dangerous and a long way from comfortable notions of environmentally friendly recycling. Despite this, the people that we met were proud of the scraps of wealth that they separate, sift and conjure from dust and silt. In a small brick enclosure, we watched a process where copper is separated from circuit boards in a series of chemical washes. The blackened husks that remain are left in the road outside. Each electronic device we discard represents a waste of resources. In addition to the tons of fossil fuels and raw materials used to manufacture them, electronics contain a range of substances harmful to human health. A typical cathode ray tube from a monitor or television contains nearly two kilos of lead. Lead, along with mercury, is a powerful neurotoxin that workers in the electronic scrap industry are exposed to daily as they dismantle screens, circuit boards and components. In India, many of these workers can be found in an industrial zone outside Delhi. Mayapuri is home to a large community of scrap dealers and their employees. The men, women and children who work here dismantle and sort everything from aircraft to the smallest items of household waste. The language we use to describe the world of waste has become compromised. The word recycling is worthless as a way of understanding what happens to our garbage. There is no guarantee that something that is recycled will not create dangerous waste as a byproduct of the recycling process itself. Just outside Shantou, a boom city in one of China's special economic zones, next to a town that produces ladies' underwear, is a cluster of villages surrounding a town called Guiyu. The entire community of Guiyu and its surrounding villages subsists on the reprocessing of electronic waste. It is estimated that 100,000 people earn their living working with electronic waste in this one area of China. The scale of this enterprise is difficult to conceive. In Guiyu there are hundreds of roadside businesses, small workshops and yards. A chaos of activity that cannot be measured accurately, but when accumulated becomes a significant industry.
Travelling along one road in Nanyang village, we could see the full spectrum of 21st century technology being dismembered, sorted and unmade. Printers, microwaves, hi-fis, cables, ink cartridges, monitors, DVD players, televisions, laptops, keyboards, connectors, calculators, games consoles, video players, personal computers, telephones, photocopiers, fax machines, the list of items is endless. This kaleidoscope of failed electronics reflects a strange image of technological progress, showing us a world where we are more likely to keep simple tools, a lamp, a knife or a clock, than the multifunctional gadgets that promise so much, yet age so quickly. A few years ago, these machines were the pinnacle of modern computing science, assembled in pristine, sterile factories. Once shiny, expensive and desirable, these objects now lie in the dirt, reduced to the status of junk. The truckloads of defunct computers are testament to the impetus of our supply and demand society, expressed as a relentless appetite for new products, fashions and ideas. The trade in electronic waste effectively transfers the environment for and health damage caused by electronic junk from rich countries to countries with low labour costs that are the least likely to be able to afford to deal with the waste safely. In 1989 an international agreement called the Basel Convention was implemented which now bans the unregulated trade and dismantling of electronic waste. It is clear from the truckloads of foreign computers that travel from Hong Kong to Guayu that it is not difficult to circumvent this legislation. The business of the junk broker is made easier if few questions are asked, and in this way the unwanted quickly becomes the untraceable. Often the only clues as to where these objects come from are the magnetically stored fragments that are abandoned as unsalvageable memories of other lives and other places. In the outskirts of villages, next to waterways that are black, green and blue with residues, lie the acid treatment sites. After the chips are removed from the circuit boards, they are brought here, to pits full of agua regia, a mixture of concentrated nitric and hydrochloric acids. We watched a 21st century alchemist, his hands bandaged from chemical burns, wash the chips in red plastic laundry tubs with a ladle of acid. Thick, choking orange clouds of gases rose from the basins. In the bottom of the tub, in an electric blue soup, we could see small flecks of gold precipitating. For money, people have made a mess of this good farming village. After they have dismantled the computers, they burn the useless parts. Everyday villagers inhale this dirty air. Their bodies have become weak. Many people have developed respiratory and skin problems. Some people wash vegetables and dishes with the polluted water and they get stomach sickness. <laughs>